Let's talk about refrigeration loops within Promax. I have here a very simple propane refrigeration loop that's been drawn out. And what makes these types of systems unique is that these are closed loops or closed systems. So as you can see here, there aren't any inlets or outlets. We just have a fluid that's in this continuous loop. That means there's going to be a couple things that we need to do differently. The main difference we will see is in this block here called our propagation terminal. And what this propagation terminal does is it's essentially a way of cutting the loop. Okay, you can see from the drawing it looks kind of like a short circuit in an electrical circuit. Essentially what it does is it stops information from propagating through that loop. So it's not continuously going uh, through the entire loop. For example, if I type a composition into stream 1 here, Promax is smart enough to know that stream 2 has the same composition and so it propagates that composition to stream 2 and then to stream 3, 4, and then stream 5. Without this propagation terminal, if this was some other block, stream 5 would then try to pass the composition back into stream 1 even though we already specified it there. And so it ends up continuously passing information around just writing it over itself and Promax just won't solve that way. So we need to break the loop which allows us to essentially define a starting place for our loop and then within this propagation terminal we can tell Promax what information to allow through the block and what information to stop at that point. So I'll go ahead and specify this whole loop for us as an example. I'm going to treat stream 1 kind of like it's an inlet stream and I'll start there. So in stream 1 I'm going to type my composition. I could put the composition in at any point and Promax would realize the composition is the same, but I'm going to start in stream 1. So I open up stream 1, come here to the composition and set that as just 100% propane in this case. The next block that we run into is our valve and this valve's job is to drop our pressure low enough that we can achieve the low temperatures we need in order to do our chilling. And so in this stream coming out of the valve, I could either type in a pressure, if I know the pressure I want out of this valve, or if I'm aiming for a particular temperature, I could also type that temperature in. So for example, if I knew that I needed to get my propane down to negative 20 degrees, because the process fluid I'm cooling down is in, say negative 10 degrees and I've got a 10 degree approach. I could just type a, temp a temperature in directly here and Promax will end up calculating the pressure that my valve needs. But again I could have put a pressure instead of a temperature. And that leads me to the chiller, or this is the evaporator side of the chiller. And that chiller, like all heat exchangers, needs a pressure drop. So I'll just put a small drop in there. We can then define what's coming out of our chiller. And since I said, like I said, this is the evaporator side of our chiller, we want our propane to be 100% vapor coming out of this chiller. So I'm going to go into stream three and type 100% vapor. The last piece of information we need around this chiller is we need to know how much duty that it needs to supply. And so if this was connected to our process side, then depending on the temperatures and, and the flow of our process fluid, that could calculate the duty for us. Or if all we've drawn is the loop, we can define the duty itself. So I'll go back into my chiller. I'm going to say that this chiller needs 1 million BTUs per hour worth of duty. So with that fixed duty, and knowing that we're going to be 100% vapor coming out of the chiller, Promax is eventually going to calculate for us what our refrigerant flow rate is. But continuing from stream 3, we next run into our compressor. So I'm going to open the compressor and say that we are 75% adiabatic efficiency for an example. And then the compressor's job is to compress us up to a pressure that's high enough so that our air cooler can then liquefy or condense all our propane. So depending on how cold our air cooler can get us, that's really what's going to define our compressor outlet pressure. So I could come into stream 4 and type a pressure in directly there, or I could just tell Promax that I want a 100% liquid coming out of my air cooler, 
at my air cooler temperature and Promax will calculate the pressure that my compressor will need to get me up to. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to first open up the air cooler and give it a pressure drop as always. We'll say five pounds. And then in this stream number five, I'm going to tell Promax what my air cooler temperature is, say 120 degrees. And then I'll say that at this point I should be 0% vapor. Okay, and when I've typed that in, you can see here in the pressure column, or the pressure row, that Promax has calculated the pressure that I'm going to need to, uh, to be 0% vapor at this point. Okay, looking back at our loop, we see that the whole loop is still bright red, and so that's one thing about these closed loops, is they essentially solve all the pieces at the same time. So everything stays bright red until we've got all the information in place. And the last thing we need to do is inside this propagation terminal, we're going to tell it what information to propagate through, so from stream 5 to stream 1, and what information to cut off at this point. So as I mentioned, we're going to cut off the composition here because we already know the composition in stream 1, but we do want the temperature and pressure that we've set to go into stream number 1. So I'm going to open up this propagation terminal. At this point, you'll see this list of propagated variables, and this is going to be which variables we let through the block. And we'll choose two variables in this list, and generally they'll be the two variables that we know coming into the block. Okay, so the two things that we defined were our temperature and our vapor fraction, and so I'll select those two. And with that information, if I return to the flow sheet, we'll see everything is now maroon. If I execute the flow sheet, everything is turned green, and Promax has calculated how much propane, how much of this refrigerant we need in our loop in order to achieve that 1 million BTU per hour load that we have in our chiller. And so that's the basics of these closed loops like we see in our refrigeration loops. I do want to show you a second flow sheet here. We have a little more complex example, and so this is just to illustrate that you can have more complex closed loops. In this case, we've just added an economizer and broken our compression into two stages, and it's specified essentially the same. Now we just need to also define our economizer pressure and our first compression pressure, but it's the same method with, once again, that propagation terminal allowing us to handle these closed loops. Okay, and so that's all that these loops take, and I do hope this video has been of use to you. As always, if there's anything we can do, please just give us a call at 979-776-5220, or you can send us an email at support at bre.com. Thank you.